All right, Blue Devil Nation, what is up? Good evening, everybody. Welcome in. This game has not yet started, uh, but we're getting ready to roll here on this Friday night. It's about 8 p.m. on the East Coast, 5 p.m. here on the West Coast. I am headed east after this game on the Red Eye, so that is going to be just loads and loads of fun. I'm curious to see... We tried, we're trying a little something different on the tech side tonight. I'm curious to see if it works or how it works. Hopefully there's no, uh, hopefully no actual lag or anything tonight. Goes up to 720, it does. Okay, that works, good. Good evening, Swabby. Good evening, good evening. I see you're once again rejoining us. Great to have you in chat. Looking forward to a good game here tonight. I do have to, we have to sort of temper our expectations here. I think perhaps the only real interesting piece of this, well, Duke games are always interesting, but uh, we might be in for a bit of a show tonight, right? This is a bit of a, a bit of a blowout. Lafayette coming in hasn't won a single game yet. Um... They've been sort of close. They've scored lots of points. They scored their last couple games in the 80s uh, against Cornell and Syracuse. And they had a game against, or Pitt and Syracuse, they had a game against Cornell early before that. Um, but they just really haven't been able to play any defense. Like, their opponents have been scoring, like, 90-plus points on them, and, and so they're less, like, losing games because they can't play any defense. Currently, Pittsburgh, 59-50 uh, to 50 against Townsend, Right now, Jeff Capel's team uh, trying to hang on here to a four-point lead with 56.5 seconds to go. That's the game currently airing on ACC Network uh, that the Duke game will replace once we get started. So, as always, make sure to jump into the uh, jump into the Discord to uh, to grab the watch party. We'll have it live streaming when it does go live there. Uh, so you can watch along with your fellow Blue Devil fans and then join us here on YouTube for the actual conversation and all the fun that goes along with watching the game. Um, you know, it was a good game the uh, on Tuesday. Um, not anything crazy, right? We, we knew that, you know, Garner Webb wasn't quite going to be and some of these opponents are, are not going to quite be the the level um at the right level for duke let's say let's just put it that way uh we've got another game against the citadel on monday and then we actually have like a real game a week from today which is against gonzaga right that's like the game that we're all sort of waiting for which we then follow up very quickly the tuesday after that and we have the ohio state game and then we go back to like being you know playing these like small programs like the week after we have like three games against who knows like whatever uh that will just go three zero that week and then they'll kind of break for for christmas for uh like the christmas holiday for a bit and then essentially come back and start acc play uh because i believe acc play actually starts decently early uh this year so or it has been starting earlier and earlier Trying to think, when's our first? Yeah, so we have a Virginia Tech game on the 22nd, even. Uh, and I think that is kind of the first game. Game the 14th, game the 16th, game the 18th, and then right into ACC play there on the uh, on the 22nd. So plenty to look forward to. Just uh, there's been a review here. Yeah, game hasn't quite started yet. So, yeah, I'm still waiting on our Blue Devils. don't think anything, nothing crazy has happened in the last three days. Although, last weekend, as we all know, there was some shenanigans going on. Um, but in any case, let's see, just about 50 seconds here in this pit game. Pit still leading by four. Actually, Pitt not off to the best of starts, it seems. One and two on the season. It's a decent play here by Townsend. They're going to get that in. They're actually going to get two out of this. And they're going to call another timeout. So they're going to play this. Uh, well, they have even another timeout left. Somehow the Duke game is going to start on, like, my guess is going to start on, like, ESPN News. And then we're going to get thrown over the fence back the other way. I think we say official tip-off. 
Do we have an official tip on this? <laughs> Usually it's like 507, 508, something like that. Five stats. Let's see. 504, technically the official tip off. Uh, although there's no actual live stats coming from the uh, coming from Cameron yet, so but it does get annoying when you're like, well, this really doesn't matter. Just switch to the Duke game, please. <sighs> Just start the Duke game. They're going to keep us late here on a Friday chat. They're going to keep us late. Decent double team by Townsend. Pittsburgh manages to get it away, though. And there's going to be the final. They're going to give a foul. Townsend at least is out of timeouts. So this game should at least end at some point. And if, at least, if Pitt at least gets this uh, free throw, yeah, they do. So it's a four-point game. Townsend would have to take a quick shot. The best thing for us to ha for to happen for us right now would be to Townsend to get a shot. It misses. They got a rebound. They have to put up a last-second shot, but they got to go quick. Cause they got yeah. Okay, so there's their prayer. They don't get that. So there's the offensive rebound, and now they have ten seconds to go, but it gets blocked. This actually helps us out too. Because now Towns is going to have to inbound. They're going to have to get something really quick. Assuming the shot does not go in. Oh, the shot did go in. So now they're just going to play a foul game again. Unless Pittsburgh just throw it down the court. Oh, come on. Yo, Keon Alexander, what up, man? We're just waiting for the game to start. Waiting for Pittsburgh to uh, put Towns into way. It's the unfortunate piece about being the nightcap is that your uh, game doesn't start on time. Yippee. But at least we can, uh, <laughs> at least Jeff Capel, former Duke, former Duke assistant, can g get a W. So, all right, this should really, uh, this one should end it. All right, he's got, Pittsburgh gets that one. It's a three-point game. Now, I don't want to see overtime here. Drill this free throw and let us go and watch her Duke game in peace. Come on. Come on, buddy. <clears throat> there you go. That's it. There you go, Pittsburgh. Make your free throws down the stretch. Don't foul the dude. They give it away. Oh, God. If Townsend's going to foul again, that would just be dumb. Oh, nobody touched it? Oh, so they're going to... Just Pittsburgh, just throw it to the other side of the court. Just, like, get rid of it. There you go. That's it. Done. All right. Put the Duke game on. Come on! Great. Fantastic. Don't even cut to commercial. Just go straight. Straight to the Duke game. All right, here we go, finally. God, we haven't even started. What the? All right, all right, here we go. 
I don't. I mean, we did a lot of Duke games back in my day, and I can't remember starting 10 minutes when we were doing the ushering. I can't remember starting 10 minutes late to a game. But that uh, that big bird needs to find his way to the Elmo and the Cookie Monster. I think is probably where he's going uh, in the student section there. So. Finally, jeez. All right, ready to go. I think the stream should turn on in just a second there. Hopefully, in the uh, in the actual Discord. Mm, I don't know. Don't know what I don't know what's going on with that one. Anyway, I can jump in there and do it, I guess. Okay, we are getting ready to go here after a 12-minute delay. There we go, Mark Williams, tip off, and Bancaro almost has it, but actually tipped out of bounds. I think it technically goes in as a turnover, although probably, uh, uh, or not, nobody actually had possession of the ball. Purely... And Kara just touched it, so no turnover. That's I, at least how I would score it. All right, on the floor for the Blue Devils. Here we go. Williams, Keels, Wendell, Van Caro, and yeah, Jeremy Roach. So unlike the Gardner-Webb game where there was like nobody that had like a prayer, at least like within the height matchup here, there is actually a seven-footer on the uh, on the side of Lafayette, and Van Caro actually gets denied on his first uh, first drive to the basket there. And there you go. Things up and running now. So we are good to go. All systems green. Timothy Phillips, greetings. Good evening. Yes, and we are good to go here on this Friday night from Cameron Indoor. Hopefully everybody had a decent week. But no matter how your week went, it is the weekend. So happy Friday. And uh, and yeah, hopefully you guys are looking to have a good weekend here. We're going to get it started on the right foot. Here with this Duke W that we're going to get as Bancaro misses the second one. Now, this, for the betting folks out there, the spread here, 32 and a half points. Quite considerable. Uh, so maybe that's the game that we play right now, whether or not uh, uh, Vegas gets it right. Because I think we all fully expect Duke to be able to win this one. But uh, we'll see by how much. This is Tyrone Perry actually going to get this over to... Uh, Neil Quinn, but Neil Quinn the pass too much to handle there for C.J. Fulton. They actually had a bit of a mismatch there with Quinn uh, on Roach, so that probably would have worked uh, if they had actually managed to execute it. Wendell Moore handling the ball duties here for the Blue Devils, as Lafayette is in a 2-3 zone at the moment, and Jeremy Roach driving into the paint, and his Shot will roll out. Williams can't quite corral it. Duke refusing to give up, though, on the defensive end, on that end of the floor. But uh, Lafayette's going to get an easy bucket. No! Williams rejects it. Beautiful rejection. Way to run the floor, big man. Actually, that was a lay-in, and Williams came from the other end of the floor to just drill it. And then Roach for three. No, Bancaro, long rebound here at the ACC logo. Pass it out to Keels. This is definitely good. This is definitely good as Keels goes in. A fantastic opportunity to take a three-point after that long rebound. Perfecto. Um, yeah, Timothy, greetings. Did, did it not work? Is this? Am I on? Is this thing working? It should be working. It says live. But great defense here by Duke as Bancaro is going to force the jump ball. Possession. Lafayette will retain possession. Um, and folks, if you need the watch party, jump into Discord as it says above my head. And, uh, and uh, yeah, links in the description of the video below. All good there. 
What are we doing? What are we doing? All right, inbounding here. Um, and actually, this uh, should be actually like real time, real time, I think, since I don't have to do all the streams today. Uh, pass too high for Mark Williams. Right idea, poor execution. Trevor Keels' alley pass didn't quite make it. And uh, Mark Williams couldn't come up with it. Mark Williams, that should be a foul! Oh, never mind. Mark Williams is going to take that. That's an easy two. It should have been a foul on the other end of the court. But it's like in soccer when, you know, you have the advantage and the ref just lets you play. Why not? Let's have it. Weak side rebound off the missed three by Kyle Jenkins goes to Bancaro. Bancaro looking for an opportunity to get it to Williams. Can't. And Duke resets. Roach to Moore. Lafayette back into man-to-man -man here as Roach has 10 seconds on the shot clock. And Mark Williams out to uh, Moore. Moore's going to go for three here. That looks good. Ooh, in and out. But rebound to Williams. Oh, what a beautiful little one-handed floater. Mark Williams with four points early here. Beautiful little putback. Yes, the Big Bird did find the Elmo and the Cookie Monster. That is fantastic. You can see them there, right? <laughs> the uh, the Cameron Crazies are in, are in the house. I love. I'm a big fan of the of the Elmo and the Cookie Monster there. Yeah, so that's the replay there. That was definitely a foul that just didn't get called, but whatever. It results in a two point bucket for Duke anyway, as Mark Williams just manages to drill it in. So all good. All right, Roach bringing it up the court. It's eight to nothing currently for Duke. Bancaro. Oh, Keels was open on the outside. Keels was wide open for three, but Bancaro decided to take it himself. It doesn't quite fall. And Lafayette has the first points. No, they don't. They have another rebound, though. That should have been steps. That should have absolutely been steps by Chris Rubayo. But uh, not called. Neil Quinn receiving the ball off the inbounds over to Tyrone Perry, leading scorer for Lafayette. And then this is inside. This is going to be Theo John on Quinn. John, decent defense here, denying baseline. Quinn still trying to back him down. Quinn, Quinn with the spin move. Quinn up and over, and oh, it goes in. That was a tough shot to go up and over Theo. Yo, he worked for that one. I'll give him two. Why not? Lafayette is on the board with their first points of the afternoon or the evening, rather, and they're back in the 2-3 zone here. Van Carroll gets the double team. Keels at the top, and Keels is going to go for three. Hits back iron. John tries to the rebound, and no good. As Duke uh, out of bounds against the Blue Devils, so Lafayette will get possession after we come back from this media timeout. All right, chat, welcome in. Welcome in to all the Blue Devil fans again. If you need the game itself, jump into our Discord. You got the, your Blue De fellow Blue Devil fans there in the watch party making it happen. How about the Tar Heels nearly going down to Brown University last week? You'll love to see it. you love to see that. Yes. Oh, just after I went off the air. Yeah, I was like, there was one game. I was like, wouldn't it be hilarious if UNC just ended up losing this? But to be fair, to be fair, I will probably say that about, like, every UNC game. Just because that's, like, I feel like that's just, like, the thing that we should do. <laughs> like we we always expect UNC to lose, even if it's not against us. So there you go. Um, so it's not a difficult call to make. It's not always correct, however. There are certain seasons where it is more correct than others, and perhaps uh, in Hubert Davis's first season, maybe it will end up being more correct than others when we get into ACC play. But um, I guess for now, they've got some easier opponents, kind of like tonight. This is a pretty easy opponent. Look, if we got, like, somehow upset, it would just be like, you know, well, at least even if Austin was an NCAA tournament team, this is not an NCAA tournament team, guys and gals. It's just not, not going to happen. Chance of Duke losing, like, zero. Zero. <laughs> what? It will not make the tournament, by the way. 
Oh well, and then it's uh, then it's the NIT for them. And what which new rules are we? Maybe I haven't kept up with the with those new rules for for the tournament itself. Let me uh, let's do some quick research while we're at commercial break. New rules. Let's see. How the new draft of the NCAA. Oh, interesting. New two minute overtime rule could change. Wait, what? Oh, no. This is, that's wrong. I see that there's something from, yeah, Greenberg earlier this week. Mike Greenberg discussing it. New draft. Hmm. Interesting. I'll have to read up on this piece. In any case, we're back. We're back in action here uh, in Cameron. Eight to two at the moment. As Duke leading here, and this is Perry. Perry going to get it back to Quinn. Quinn going to work on Joey Baker. A little spin move there. That's short. Baker comes down with the rebound. Oh, basically the possibility of no more Cinderella. Okay. Yeah, that would that would be unfortunate. I feel like that's the whole point of the, like the tournament. Uh, is that the best team, the best team doesn't always win, but that's kind of what makes it interesting. Baker fakes and it will get fouled. No, will not get fouled. That was totally a check. Wendell Moore with a shot fake, takes one step to the left and misses the three. AJ Griffin with the rebound. And that's going to be a foul against Lafayette. That's un really unfortunate if there's no, uh, no no more Cinderella. I do have an article here about what... This... But it's all about NIL compensation is mainly what this uh, article says. Baker for three is no good either, as Duke's coming up cold from the field at the moment. Hmm. I mean, I do think the NIL thing is a is a is a good thing. So, um, in any case, back to the game. Neil Quinn to Perry, and this is actually Quinn tried to follow up as Brantley missed the three from the outside. Does go three for the outside for Kyle Jenkins is good. Eight to five. As Duke has gone cold from the field here in the last couple minutes after we were out on an 8-0 run to start the game. It's probably more or less three or four minutes of nothing. And then A.J. Griffin, the shot looked actually pretty decent. Long rebound tapped out by Wendell to Griffin, who gets it back to Roach as we reset 20 on the shot clock here. And Roach... Now being closely guarded there by O'Boyle. Cross court to Baker. Shot fake, and then he takes a step inside the two-point line, and that comes up short. Hits the rim, drops in there for Lafayette, who now smells a little bit of blood in the water and has an opportunity here. Oh, great hands by Roach getting in the passing lanes, and Roach is going to go coast to coast. He got bumped. That should have been a foul. Should have been a foul, all right, but they're going to give it to Baker. Oh, it doesn't count. It is a foul. All right, a highlight play from Joey that doesn't count. The foul was called on the floor earlier. Yeah, that's absolutely that's the foul. Yeah, Joey comes in with the left with the left hand to put it down. Hmm. 
Duke's going to have to inbound in front of the Lafayette bench as Bancaro returns. So right now you're five on the floor. Bancaro, Keels, Griffin, uh, Joey, and Mark Williams. Interesting. Larger lineup here. We don't have the shorter guards. Bancaro underneath to Williams, who finds a spot in there, and he's got six so far on the evening. Beautiful look there by Bancaro. Fantastic play. Great vision by the big man. And a little too much passing there from Lafayette. They do manage to recover it. And then Chris Rubio, and that's a charge. Yes! Charge, Trevor Keels. Fantastic defensive play. Ready to give up the body for the cause. <laughs> um, yes, do I like any other sports than basketball? Yes, my family were big sailors, actually. And we follow F1 real closely. I know we've done motorsports. Uh, so there is the uh, that piece. Um, and then what are the other, yeah, basketball is the other big one. Football, like NFL stuff, uh, for sure. I watch all the time. Baker's wide open. Go, Joey. Oh, come. Mm. Rebound down to Keels. As he gets this back to Bancaro. Bancaro's going to go cross court to Baker. Nice extra pass to Keels in the corner. Ooh, just short. The three not quite dropping here tonight. But this, ooh, this is great energy. Keels almost puts his body on the floor. This double team, this is like full court press from Duke. Actually, as Keon says, I actually like this too. Great. Oh, AJ Griffin with the active hands on defense. Lafayette can barely get it across the timeline. Baker's going to be wide open. You got to hit this, Joey. Yes! That's it. You got to hit it. Baker for three. Off the beautiful defensive sequence by the Blue Devils who've ramped it up. And now Lafayette basically like, gets it over half court and they're like, they've got two Blue Devils in their face. No, oh, then I'll have to call timeout. Yes, a fantastic man-to-man -man defense there as C.J. Fulton is held up by Trevor Keels, who has, by the way, played fantastic on-ball defense through the first four games, like three, four games of this season. So it's like, should be no surprise. He's like coming out to be one of our best defenders. Um, and like his activeness in the passing lanes is just fantastic. So we have a timeout because Lafayette was going to lose possession. <laughs> Look at Baker, man. <laughs> Baker's just got to... Baker's knows his role. He's got to come off the bench. He's got to bring energy night in, night out. He's got to hit like two or three threes a game. He can do that. Mission accomplished. We're off to the races. Man. Should be a relatively short timeout unless this actually is like a full full media timeout. Which based on how much time is left, it could be, but anyway, we'll check the uh we'll make sure to get the stats uh stats correct here. team stats because I th think there's more fouls on Lafayette than there are I have said yes there's actually four fouls on Lafayette Jenkins has one I've only charged one the one that I called over here from Seattle uh old Boyle Quinn and Rubio there we go so I, I thought Brantley was charged for a foul no he was the one that fouled oh no it is I was right it's like it has to be. Jenkins, Quinn, Brantley. Jenkins, Quinn. I'm going insane. Oh, there it is. There it is. I got, I got it. Uh, which Duke players have fouls? None. None. We haven't fouled at all. That's great. Defense without fouling. Either that or we're just getting nice home calls. One of the two. Oh, Keon, thank you very much, man. You know, we're going to we're gonna try to do as many two games as possible. There's just some some games are just gonna, not going to be possible um, because I'm just, like, not around. Like, the Ohio State game, unfortunately, I'm out of town. I will watch the game. We can chat on Discord, but I will be out of town uh, for that one. I will. We all have Gonzaga. I'll be, I'll be around for that one. Um, just the Ohio State game is, like, I'm, I got a work thing. Uh, that I got to be traveling for. It just happens to be a really bad, just doesn't align very well at all. But yeah, go to hell, Carolina. Go to hell for GTHC, GTH for those uninitiated 
That's what that stands for. A little bit of a highlight reel so far. Duke looked like it almost fell asleep a little bit. It was 8-5 to five for a while. As Lafayette was actually starting to show some signs of life. And then the Duke defense started ramping it up. Lafayette manages to actually successfully inbound this one. And as Tyrone Perry hands it off to Neil Quinn. And we're back in action here in Cameron. Great defense by Joey Baker. Gets the switch on Perry now. And we have, let's see, this is Keels. No, this is going to be Wendell. Decent ball movement, actually, by uh, by Lafayette. But it's going to be a shot clock violation because they just didn't see it. And uh, actually, I didn't even see it. So shot clock violations all around. Bang. <laughs> the Kenny Bernard special. It is a breath of fresh air. Like, yeah, and like... Uh, like Blue Devil fans who have been around for a long time will remember what that that Grayson Allen senior year team. Wait a second, Wendell Moore, gonna give it to Mark Williams. That alley oop actually works. Uh, I was at my as I was saying, uh, Trevor Keel's gonna get called for a foul here. I think it was actually a trip. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, that like senior year team with Grayson where they played zone, and you're just like, oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> like the Duke team that played zone. Um, it's just like, yeah, we are like, we're way past it. And what's crazy is that usually Duke's man-to-man -man defense is really hard for freshmen to play. And I think that's like with the one and done era, you haven't seen a good man-to-man -man Duke team. Like the freshmen in 2015, obviously got it. They got it. They got it early. They had great chemistry. This team also seems to get it. And I think it has, to, it's a chemistry thing as well. Last team's, last year's team didn't have a chance, unfortunately, because of the whole COVID situation. So that chemistry never really developed. As Lafayette tries to get inside here, they have one second on the shot clock and Williams is going to block that too. And it's another shot clock violation. So you have back-to-back -back shot clock violations here by the Duke Blue Devils. As just as we're talking about this whole thing, defense. <laughs> the 4-1 zone, any, I mean, any zone. Like... Yeah, Coach K knows how to play, like, 2, 3, 4, whatever he wants to play. 1, 3, 1, like, you know, he can play whatever he wants. Obviously, you could just call up Jimmy Beheim over in Syracuse and be like, yo, help me play his own. But, yeah, it's just like, <sighs> it just, like, doesn't look like a Duke team. This looks, like, much more like a Duke team. And, guys, it's only November. We haven't even hit Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way, is next week. You know, we'll have we'll have a stream on Monday as Mark Williams dribbles that one off his foot. That's just an unfortunate turn of events there um but yeah we'll have you know we'll have a stream on monday and then we'll have gonzaga which is post thanksgiving so make sure you, you know, have eat lots of turkey and then you wake up the next day and then you got to stay up late again because it's like a 10 30 game on the east coast so you got to hang in with you got to hang with us here duke chat you just got to hang with us because that's going to be a late one but it's going to be a good one as the first real test of the season. Well, I suppose Kentucky was, but you know, neither here nor there. Uh, almost a block by Williams as uh, John Brantley puts it over the basket. Actually, an air ball by all standards. It was a pretty looking play by Bancaro who wanted to take it coast to coast with the left. Wendell Moore steals it. Wendell Moore is going to get the putback. That's an easy two, just being opportunistic. Right place, right time. Duke 17 to 5 at the moment. And the 2015 team turned the switch when they came to Louisville and ran. The, <laughs> a meal went off, but this team is so unselfish. Yeah, I agree. The, the interest, interestingly enough, you see the first game against Kentucky. There's been one of these games we where we haven't seen as many assists. I think it was the first game against Kentucky. Maybe just a little bit more nerves and a lot of people playing like just sort of more ISO kind of ball. The first game of the season, but. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, this does look, they, they do share the ball decently well. Williams, long rebound, basically has to go out to the Duke D to recover that one you know, over in midcourt. And Wendell Moore is going to call for a foul. Uh, yes, no. Poor guy, Lafayette player just got rolled over. Never mind. It's going to be a foul on O'Boyle and uh, kind of insult to injury because Wendell Moore just put him on the floor. And he gets called for the foul. Yeah. I, <laughs> that's what I said. I was like, that's why I initially called it. I was like, that's a charge. <laughs> but I guess the other guys just, uh, if we saw the replay, he's like moving. He must be, he must be moving. If maybe from the reverse angle, I don't know. 
it does look a little suspect, though, as Wendell Moore's got uh, three as he makes the first of the two free throws cutaway. That's a home call. That's uh, a home call. And Wendell will get the second of two. So four points so far tonight for Wendell! As Lafayette tries to get a little cheeky, throws it across the court, and just over the outstretched hands of John Brantley, as that is a turnover. Which, okay, I actually wasn't tracking this. That is the 11th turnover for Lafayette. Oh boy, uh, it's 11 turnovers in uh, 10 minutes of play. So by any metric, that's not very good. Bancaro with the sweet stroke, little mid-range jump shot, just long, just long. But keep taking that shot. We've seen him be able to hit it, so no real issues there. This one is Rubio. Going to Perry. Perry to Rubio. This should be an easy one. No, it's not. It's blocked from behind by Bancaro. Oh, the easy two-point layup turns into a disaster for Lafayette as Jeremy Roach gets himself caught inside but manages to get outside to Bancaro. He almost did it on both ends of the floor as the three is just short and Bancaro again with the defense. Look at that hustle. He's running up and down the court, man. That's the other piece of this is like when your star player, actually, you saw this with Zion. Zion was a good example of this. When your star player is putting it out, is putting everything out on the floor. And actually, by the way, Jalen Johnson was a bad example of this. Out, when they're putting out everything out on the floor. They're running down the court. They're do, getting it done on the defensive end. Then they show up on the offensive end. And Van Carroll misses that shot, but he recovers on defense and gets in the passing lane here. And basically forces Lafayette into an inbounds pass that they don't quite, they don't convert. So when your star player is putting everything out on the floor, that's like, that's tremendous. Because the rest of the team, of course, is going to play better. If the star is just out there, you know, like, hey, look at me. Look at what I can do. I'm going to the NBA next year. That's, that's not what you want. But so that's a huge positive sign, I think, that we've seen here early in the season as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, more Griffin. So Griffin definitely probably stay. I, yeah, I would also suggest probably more. More as a junior. Yeah, Joey's the only senior. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, A.J. Griffin getting it down there. Yeah, I think A.J. Griffin currently, is, we see him in more of a supporting role, but he might have the biggest ceiling, at least, oh, as he gets beat on defense there. Uh, a little backdoor cut uh, by... Eric Sonberg uh, beats AJ Griffin, but Griffin has probably has the most uh, has a lot of ceiling because we haven't quite been able to see you know everything that he's capable of. So I think his growth is a huge X factor uh, for for Duke. More so, like we know Wendell Moore is kind of like an X factor because if Wendell plays well, as the aforementioned AJ Griffin gets his fourth points of the night. We know if Wendell plays well, this Duke team is going to be really, really tough to beat. But we just, like, we don't know how good AJ can be quite yet. Because we've just really seen him coming off the bench and such, right? Not being, like, a key, like the player. Uh, Baker back in the game playing some really good defense here on Perry. And this is going to go to Rubio and the th long three-point shot. Wow, okay, that actually goes in. Rainbow from Fulton goes in for three. Credit, you know what? Hats off, kid. Nice. Hats off. <laughs> Marvin Bagley overrated. Um, yeah, prob probably. Uh, AJ Griffin now feeling it, but he's going to give it up to Wendell. Wendell for three. That ends up being just short. How's the the, Harry, the Harry Giles one was the uh, the biggest one that was overrated. I guess he came in with like the most like a ton of hype, but it never materialized. And to some degree, that's not necessarily his fault because he had you know he was dealing with a lot of injuries. Uh, as Kyle Jenkins gets two more, that's five. But yeah. And, oh, the finger roll by Baker. But Lafayette just turns it right over. And Duke just turns it right over. Wendell, what was that pass? What? I think he tried to get it to Roach, and the ball just, like, the pass just never made it. Okay. 
Theo John working on the outside here beyond the three-point line. And it's another three-point shot. Actually, that three-point shot goes from Jenkins as well. Wow. Lafayette now bringing this thing down to within eight as uh, they've sort of withstood the Duke run. Coach Kane not happy here with the three-point defense from Duke. And actually, this game has gone flying by. We're at 622 in the first chat. Um, yeah, this has gone... Uh, this has gone quite quick. Actually, we're having such a great conversation here with the folks in chat. The game's just been going by. Um, let's just check in on the stats real quick to make sure that we're all caught up. As I think we've got... Let's see. Yeah, we got two fouls on the Duke side of things. Roach just has one. So no real foul trouble here for Duke just yet. Lafayette's... Uh, Rubio's got two, so that's the one that they're going to have to watch there. And the next foul will put Duke on the free throw line because they're currently at six. So one more puts them over the limit. The three-point shooting from Lafayette has heated up recently. They're actually shooting 50% from three, three of six. And uh, Duke only two of 12. Of course, Duke just having taken many more shots. We're nine. Actually, our free throw, our shooting percentage is abysmal right now. Uh, we're 9 of 27. We've just taken so many more shots than Lafayette. It's sort of making up the difference. But both teams are actually shooting 33% from the floor. Uh, Duke, 9 of 27. Lafayette, 6 of 18. So that's kind of bizarre, given that it's, you know, we're ahead by 8, but we're shooting the same percentage. And Lafayette, of course, making up the difference on the free throw line. Sorry, on the three-point line to try to sort of get themselves back back into the game. Um, the other one that's standing out to me is rebounding is actually even right now. 15 rebounds apiece. Duke with more offensive rebounds, but uh, Lafayette not. And then the other one, points in the paint, yes, in favor of Duke. And then it's the points off turnover. So Duke's actually, we've been getting the easy points, 11 points off of the 11, 12 Lafayette turnovers, which in hindsight isn't all that great, which basically means that we're averaging about, well, we're averaging less than a point per turnover. Um, and by my standards, that's not quite good. So maybe a little bit of sloppy play here. Maybe we have underestimated our opponent just a bit. Uh, which is a bit unfortunate, really. I mean, yeah, we should be... In any case, no matter where sort of the first half ends up, right, we would expect that the second half to be a bit more of a... A bit... A bit, uh, bit more of a exhibition of sorts but <laughs> Timothy that was a it's a good thing that doctor's a Duke fan ah! oh man also hospital probably a good spot to be during a Duke Carolina game there you win by one point if you end <laughs> Because that's one that uh, really gets the blood pressure going. So, at least it's, uh, you know, you're close by. Uh, as Duke fans everywhere have uh, have issues during close Duke games. My self present company included. Actually, Lafayette really ramping it up on the defensive end here. Duke has 10 seconds to go, and Keels is going to put this up from just beyond the free throw line. Keels... Gets it for two. Yeah. There, Keon, you're surrounded by Duke fans. It's a perfect place. I actually, I got to think about it. None of the folks that I work with are big. Uh, well, at least I don't have any Carolina fans. Carolina fans. I did see a Carolina fan at the gym the other day. And I was like, why would you wear that Carolina stuff? It's a terrible shade of orange. Uh... Yeah. Anyway, it looked horrible for a gym outfit. Terrible. As um, basically, we've just traded buckets here. So two points apiece. The lead still eight. 
Bancaro trying to force this up. No good. Hmm. Let's see, now got to recover defensively. And Duke going to get that rebound. A little bit of a rush shot there by Lafayette. Bancaro going to try to make something happen. No, gives it up to Keels. Five minutes to go here in the first. Bancaro screens for Roach, but Roach goes the other way. Bancaro, oh, sorry, John was, but Bancaro is going to be the one with the three. And Bancaro's got it. Finally, Bancaro had scored one point. I feel like those were almost the first points of the game as Lafayette's going to take a timeout. Anyway. And I'm unbiased, so it's a great combo. Oh, man. Yeah, so like the ones where you have like, those games where you have the ball and you don't... Like, when you have possession, but you can't get the shot off, are the worst. Because you're like, well, we could have won it, but, like, we didn't even get a chance to win it. Which is painful, right? Like, you may as well, like, you're just better off, like, putting the shot up. And you're like, well, if it didn't go in, it'd be like, well, at least we... At least we shot it, right? Like, you shot your shot, it didn't go... Oh, well, it happens. But, like, to actually not even get the shot off, it's just like, huh? <laughs> You're like, what? But, yeah, Lafayette on a bit of a streak here. They've hit their last five from the field. Despite the turnovers. And, yes, the graphic on the TV broadcast is now correct, as Lafayette only has two timeouts left in the game because they did take one early when they were in defensive. Uh, they were under a bit of pressure from Duke. So uh, Perry, though, hasn't scored at all for Lafayette. So we're managing to keep one of their better scorers off. And that three-point shot, finally a miss there by Lafayette from Jenkins, their three-point sniper, who's been lighting it up tonight so far in Cameron. Williams, handoff to Bancaro. Almost traveled with it. But Bancaro going to put up another mid-range jump shot. Good looking stroke. Not so good looking result. Unfortunate. Two Lafayette players bang into each other there. That was a miscommunication as Perry puts up a long three that goes all the way over the rim. And uh, rebound by Duke. Roach going to get good positioning, but it's actually blocked. Roach's shot blocked. That dribble drive back, that's like something that Keels needs to do. Roach just a little too short for that one. And the shot ends up in a block as Perry. Oh, Perry turns it over. Wendell Moore's out in the open court. It's a three on one. Wendell is going to take it himself, finishing with the right. Nice little finger roll. Good steal there by Wendell. Oh, right back down to the other side of the court. Lafayette, quick three. He was open. Perry was open, but he can't get one to fall. Seventh steal for Duke on that previous possession. Three minutes to go. Bancaro driving baseline. Bancaro thinks he has an option there. It goes to Williams. Was it a pass or a shot? Doesn't matter. But Duke can't come down with the two big men. Williams and Bancaro trying for rebounds, trying for points. And Duke just gets lost on defense here. Oh, man. Jenkins got 11. Uh, that was not a good D Duke defensive. That was a lazy possession. Nobody really got back. We've been talking about how well these players seem to recover, but nobody got back in time. Keels with the extra pass. Back to Keels from Wendell. I think Keels should have just shot it. Too unselfish, maybe, as Williams trying to go up with it. Keels comes down with that in a mad scramble. Keels still can't get it as Lafayette comes out of the scrum with the ball, and they're going coast to coast here. Lafayette. Oh, yes. Fulton. Wow, all right. This is an eight-point game. Still an eight-point game as Duke finally calls a timeout and we have a stoppage in play. <sighs> Everybody catch your breath. Yeah, they're getting sloppy. Yeah. That's what Brad Nessler was saying when he said, why couldn't you get a shot away? It doesn't make any sense because they had an opening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Coach K is going to have to give an inspired locker room speech here. 
we're sort of just kind of going through the motion. Like, we play really good for four minutes, and then, like, we have, like, two or three minutes where we're just like, eh. And we just, like, kind of go through the motions and let Lafayette get right back into it. And that's kind of, like, why we just, like, can't put these guys away right now. I mean, granted, an eight-point game. It's been as many as, what, 11 or double more? But, yeah, like, we just can't. Keeping it at an arm's length, and that's about it. Duke needing a little bit of energy. Maybe it's just late. Maybe it's just late. It is almost nine o'clock. It's a bit late to start a uh, start a game. Uh, is Coach Case grandson on the? I got texting from. Is Coach Case grandson on the bench? I don't think so. be on the lookout i don't know chad has anybody seen savarino on the bench i'm almost hesitant to ask <laughs> oh my gosh timothy goodness gracious timothy holy moly yeah, absolutely. Thoughts and prayers. So now think about that tonight. Whew. Tough, man. Well, hopefully Duke's going to give you a positive on the positive side. We're going to we're going to bring some positivity back into the world here uh, with with this Duke game tonight and get the weekend started off correctly. I I don't know if I've Keanu, I haven't seen this remake. I'll have to look it up. Is it on Netflix? Can I Netflix this? Holy moly. Back in Durham. Nice shot of the uh, student center. You know, that was not there when I was a student, but I have taken advantage of it since I've been back. It was there my second year of business school, I think. So I did get to enjoy just a bit of it. Um, but that place is fantastic. Um, okay, yeah, I don't. Did we just... Did we just turn the ball over in our own, like... What? I was, like... I was, like, not even paying attention there for a second, because I was like, oh, we're just inbounding the ball, but Wendell's going to score here. Where's my mouse? There it is. Wendell's going to score. Lafayette got a cheeky easy two. Who scored that? What is this? Oh, yeah. We just inbounded to Roach. What? Oh, my gosh. Coach K is about to break a clipboard. I'd break a clipboard. <laughs> That's... That's a Duke 30 second timeout after that one. You know, it's, and it's a good thing that Wendell got two on the other end. Because if not, <laughs> there may be some clipboards being broken here. Kyle Jenkins, though, having himself a night so far. I mean, credit to the the kid's playing well. He's got 13 points so far tonight. It's always like for these teams, they get one shot at playing in Cameron, right? In their four years that they're at university, at college, they come out, come out and try to play here. He's got 13 points tonight. He's having a nice night. Of course, as long as you know, as long as we don't uh, lose, you put up however many points you want. It's the, I agree, it's the worst turnover I've ever seen. It's it's so brain dead. Quinn trying to back down Williams. Gets Williams caught in the air. Misses the shot. Draws the foul. First foul on Mark Williams as Neil Quinn will go to the free throw line. Whew. 
And the answer is that Severino is not on the bench. There you go. Quinn at the free throw line shooting two. And first is a miss. So I guess the foul works out because he was going to make two points on that. It was going to be an easy lay-in for him. Yeah, another late game. Wow, even later game on Monday, by the way, chat. Citadel, 9 o'clock. I got some buddies who I have a good friend who, uh, well, friend of a friend. I uh, went to the Citadel, so that's... I thought that they played against us while I was in school, too. That should be a fun one in any case. All right. Seven points, a minute 20. Baker to Williams. Williams thinking about getting it outside, but he's going to take it himself, and that's actually blocked. Uh, it's going to be a foul. It's going to be called a foul on Chris Rubio. That's his third. If that is on Rubio, that's his third. Which would be big, because that's basically their big man trying to guard Mark Williams. So, Mark Williams shooting two. You know, the Sesame Street clan there in the uh, Cameron student section just keeps growing. And I do kind of, I just find it hilarious. I guess, um, what, somebody's going to walk in with a, was it Ernie? Is that they're missing? Or something like that? Grover, which is like a Cookie Monster knockoff or something. Williams actually misses both. Oh, okay. Williams misses both. Duke with the rebound. Baker's going to go for three. Baker for, th wow, okay, that was a brick. Didn't even make it to, well, it did make it to the rim, but not above it. So the Duke three-point shooting woes continue tonight. Three of 13. And Lafayette, oh, blocked by Baker, but they're going to call goaltending. Lafayette is walking in here with a lot of confidence. Uh, yes, that is that is a correct call. Jenkins, the goaltending there. And it's a five-point margin for Duke. Wow. Wow. Okay. Baker thinking about three again. Gets it to Moore. To Keels. Keels going to take three. That shot's good. Hold right there. Three for Trevor Keels. Gets us a big, big shot. Boy, have we ever needed some points right now. Trevor Keels working on the defensive side. Switches. Now it's Perry on Baker. Arguably, arguably Lafayette's best player <clears throat> hasn't scored a single point, and they're within five. Or they're within seven. And Baker going to get called for a cheap hand check. That's the power of positivity, unlike Twitter. We try to be positive, chat. We're always going to try to be positive here. That's the thing. We do. Um, we also like it when there's not just. It's some, it gets interesting when there's not just Duke fans because we've had fans from we've had Kansas fans I've seen Louisville fans in chat I've seen fans of other ACC schools and that's actually always fun it comes up with a good um, we do get a rather good conversation going especially later in the season like closer to tournament time when Dell's gonna try to put this up before the buzzer and it doesn't go Wendell just trying to beat the clock. Not quite. Duke is going to take an eight-point lead into the halftime locker room here. 35-27. All right. Clearly, like, chat, there's some things we need to fix. Uh, but as it says above my head, jump into Discord. Your fellow Blue Devil fans were having the watch party there if you need it. Um, there are some things we need to fix. Number one is a three-point shooting, which seems to be a recurring issue throughout the season which I'm a little I'm a little concerned I'm a little concerned about it right now but we have such dominant inside presence that at some point at some point are we going to need the three yeah probably and like there's decent shooters you'd think like Bates Jones could play like has hits threes Joey's got to step it up a little bit we know that when Dell can hit three Trevor can hit three. Roach can hit three. Bancaro can hit three. Like you have at least five three-point shooting threats. And you could have like, which means you have three or four out on the floor at any time. 
which I suppose stretches the floor, but if we can't hit anything from the outside, then that's just going to make our post game harder. Or harder for the, 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 the post game. Anyway. Um. <laughs> it's how I sound when I rage on NBA 2K. <laughs> that's probably because I'm also a, uh, I'm also a gamer, so... Um. Uh, Wendell for three. No, not quite. That's it's just uh, that's fun. Yes, that's just good. Uh, and after that, I do need a little bit of water. So, all right, let's check our stats here real quick. Let's see if anything has gotten any better. Nope. <laughs> The, the shooting percentage is still awful. Um, for whatever reason, we just seem to be seem to be unable to get the ball in the basket, even though we have eight more points. But it's because we've taken 14 more shots. So our shooting percentage, we're four for 42, which is a 33.3% shooting percentage on the nose. Lafayette is 11 for 28. They're actually shooting 39%. They're actually shooting better than we are. They just haven't taken as many shots. Because they've been turning the ball over like crazy. So at least the Duke defense is working. If, if even the Duke offense is working. And it's not a terrible spot to be in. Because at least it's not the other way around. Like... There has been Duke teams in the past where it's like the other way around, where like we put up 90 points. What was it last? No, it wasn't last year. It was like two years ago. We were putting up 80, 90 point games and losing, right? We were losing because our opponents were putting up 95. And it was insane. It was just like insanity to watch. Um, Just like... But yeah, so at least the defense is doing okay. And if the defense hangs in there, the offense will come. Free throw shooting kind of abysmal for both teams, honestly. Duke at three of six, and Lafayette's only taken two, but they've missed one. So their shooting percentage looks like it's 50%. Rebounds finally in favor of Duke right now. Only plus three, though, um, which is an amazing, I suppose. But yeah, our three-point shooting, four of 16. So we're down at a nice, crisp 25%. Um, Points in the paint still being led by Duke. Points off turnovers also being led by Duke, 13 to 5. Uh, And so off of 13 Lafayette turnovers, we have 13 points. Could be better. Could be worse. Duke on the fast break, not so bad. The Duke steals, is that's uh, 10 point, points on the fast break. Duke steals 7, Lafayette 3. And the personal fouls honestly haven't been crazy. Only 7 fouls for Lafayette in that first half, and 4 from Duke. So, it's been more or less a clean game, uh, relatively speaking, from from both teams. It's not like you're seeing, like, yeah, there's no double bonus. Duke didn't even get to take free throws from those uh because we got that one extra one uh that seventh foul was a shooting foul mark williams anyway so yeah we haven't really been able to get to the line and when we have we haven't shot well we haven't shot well from three i don't know it seems like a pretty standard doesn't seem like we need to do that much to really sort of understand Buddy buckets from Syracuse will be a problem. Be interesting to see Syracuse without Jim Beheim. Honestly, I think that's going to be, uh, I think that's going to be that's going to be interesting. I, I'm not mistaken, right? Jim Beheim is no longer the coach at Syracuse, or have I messed that up? Because I thought he, re- I'm pretty sure he retired. I think, right? Chuck Norris doesn't sleep. He waits. Yes. They can't guard us when penetrating the paint, but it's where we don't understand floor spacing against the zone. Interesting. I actually, they've been playing two types of defense on us. They do play zone, but they've also been playing man. 
Um, I actually think we should be able to do okay with the zone too. Um, hold on. Oh, it is. Wait, it is still Bayheim. Oh, wait, what? This, then is this his last season? Is he doing a Coach K, like, final tour? <laughs> huh. That's that's a good Chuck Norris one, with a cordless phone, with a may as well just say with an iPhone at this point too. Is Clemson gonna go down? Is this an upset? Oh wait, it's not really an upset. Interesting. Clemson goes down, but it's not really an upset because Bonaventure was ranked and Clemson wasn't, so. Just because Clemson's an ACC school, I don't think that actually count. That doesn't count as as an upset. Um, I would like to see. Let me see. I'm just looking at. You know, we have eight from Wendell, eight from Keels. Bancaro's been sort of absent. Oh, getting back to my point about the zone, we've seen Bancaro being able to take these like 12 to 15 foot shots. You would think that he's like. Okay, it would, he'd be a good option to try to just sit at the ACC logo or just, like, shoot these elbow jump shots and be able to, like, break the zone and be the zone buster. So I'm not sure why that isn't a thing or, like, that hasn't worked. Because that's, that's what I would do. Um, so, yeah, I'm just a little curious as to what, like, why they haven't, used him in that way because we really don't have another i mean keels could do it but like the other shooters like bates bates jones joey baker and like roach even they're like outside shooters right they're like three-point shooters they're not mid-range jumper shooters so that's like when you really need van carroll but he's only got four points tonight so he's kind of been been rather quiet Gonna have to have a big second half here, guys. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Do you just, Keon? Do you just have like a list of these? Are you? Do you come up with them, or do you just like have a list of them, and uh, that you rattle off? Or are you referring to the internet? Are you cheating? Are you going to the internet for these? It's just ast it's just astounding to me that the, the the shooting percentage is so bad right now. The turnovers and the shooting percent like it just looks so bizarre. Like you'd think we'd be shooting like fifty percent or something. Clearly not the case. But I think, yeah, we have all the options available to us. Nobody's in foul trouble. I'm sort of sanguine about this right now, chat. <laughs> John Shire and, uh, and JJ Reddick. I miss John Shire's free throw shooting. That's what I miss about John Shire. There were some other, like, yeah, that, that, 20, that 2010 team was pretty good from beyond the arc, too, with, with Nolan and Singler could hit it, too. But even after then, like, Ryan Kelly was really good at, uh, you know, being tall, lanky, and being able to shoot from the outside. I mean, Grayson was fantastic, too. Um, oddly enough, I don't really ever think, like, Trey and Tyus, well, like, Trey wasn't a very good shooter his freshman year, which is why he came back that second year. Um, 
which is yeah, which is why he came back that second year to try to improve his shooting, especially from the three point line, uh, which he did actually. He did have a great second year uh, shooting from range. Yeah, yeah, Redick probably. I mean, I think the stats speak for themselves on that one, right? I used to say them all of the time back when I was in high school. There you go. Well, the other sort of funny part is that Josh Shire is now going to be the, the head coach. So, Although, I suppose Redick did have the better NBA career. So they've both, I suppose, they've both made it in their own, in their own right, right? At this point, they've both made it. But yeah, Kyle Jenkins over here on the Lafayette side. Let me just, I was going to check to the other one. Because I looked at some of this, these, I looked at some of these stats before, before the game, and let me just pull it up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, he actually has been. Yeah. So Kyle Jenkins is averaging 13.7 points per game, and he's at 15 right now. Tyrone Perry, which is number three. Uh, which is the one who's been very, very closely guarded, averages also 14.7 points per game. So a little bit more. He's actually sort of the leading scorer for Lafayette, but he's got zero. So we've actually been playing all our really good defense on Perry and not as good defense on Jenkins. I'd be curious to see if we switch out Keels and Keels just goes on Jenkins for the second half. Because Keels seems to be one of our better on-ball defenders. And so if you can lock out Jenkins, or you just let Jenkins have his night, but you just lock down Perry for essentially all eternity. And just, if he contributes zero, then somebody else is going to have to beat you. Right, is essentially what, uh, what, what we're saying. Now, as we're back here at the start of the second half... Um, Yeah, 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 dude, there you go, Duhan. Maybe we need some Duhan back for on-ball defending. Coach K looks actually surprisingly calm, guys, guys and gals. I'm, yeah, like, he, uh, maybe when he knows that this is, you know what, it's my last year, I'm not going to get crazy, like, you know, I'm not going to get crazy upset over this, I'm not going to break, uh, break whiteboards. Uh, I don't actually think there's anything wrong with crying after losing a national title. I've been, <laughs> I actually sort of luck, luckily enough from 10 and 15, we won the two, which is essentially like, since I've been in, since I first went to school, um, the two that we've been to, we've won. So we haven't ever lost a title game, but I'm not sure how I would have reacted had we lost the title games. Um, I just didn't like, didn't even want to think about it. Didn't even want to think about it. There you go. Duke worst field goal percentage in a first half since December 1st, 2020. That's actually not that long ago. That's not even a year ago. It feels like it's been a long time, but there you go. Bancaro one of eight Roach zero for four and Baker one of six. Yikes. What I'm going to say is it couldn't have gone worse. It pretty much couldn't have gone worse. And we're still up by eight. Yep. All right. Lafayette going to start with the ball here. And it's Perry being guarded by Roach. And handoff there. This is going to go to Quinn. Quinn and Mark Williams. Fulton. Fulton back to Quinn. Quinn and Mark. Mark playing some pretty good defense here. Be tall, Mark. Don't get him caught in the air. Nine seconds here for Lafayette. O'Boyle going to have to turn around. That's a tough jump shot. O'Boyle looking like Paolo Bancaro on that turnaround, Jay. And he gets it to go. Six-point lead for Duke. 
Wendell outside, tipped away by Fulton. 99 ooh, 99. So close. To, it is very hard to go unbeaten. Oh, Roach! Jeremy! Turnover by Duke. Just dumb turnover. Just literally, like, somebody said, was it Timothy that said we had, like, Butterfingers or something earlier? Like, it literally just, like, slipped out of his hands. It was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. Keel's playing on O'Boyle. Mark Williams swipes it from behind. Bancaro gets a rebound. And Bancaro going to get called for a push? What? Ugh. <laughs> what is the score? 35-29. 35-29. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Keon, I was good. Yeah, it is a little funny. It is a little, it's not something, yeah, we don't see that all the time. All right, Quinn working on Williams. Williams in the restricted area. Williams being tall. No, 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 no. What? A foul on Mark Williams? Williams was vertical here. This is actually good defense. There was a play earlier in the first half where Williams got caught. He got jump faked and he jumped. What? Where? Where is the foul? Where is the foul? What is that? That is a horrific call. And the ball knows it. Because it goes halfway down the cylinder and pops out. What? <laughs> On that one, maybe we got to... Maybe it's a makeup for the first half. I don't know. But the second shot doesn't go in either. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I guess we're just going to keep going. That's not a foul. That's not a foul. Wendell Moore is now taking the ball handling responsibilities since the ball seems to jump out of Roach's hands, although Roach now has it back. Roach over to Bancaro. Bancaro going to go for three. Yes! Bancaro's got it! Maybe that gets him going. Not not 78 points. Seven points for Bancaro so far tonight. He's just got to, you know, if he sees one go through the net, maybe that's going to be enough to get Bancaro going. All right, Williams on Quinn. Oh, backdoor cut for Lafayette. Ah, uh, it's going to be out on Keels, who had his hands in the passing lanes yet again. Nice, just perfect assist from Roach. Roach hits Bancaro in the shooting pocket. Bancaro grabs it. Single motion. Catch, shoot, done. No hesitation. Love it. Quinn on Williams. They try the backdoor cut again. Yes, and that is Perry's first points. Duke is getting beat. We're getting beat on backdoor cuts in man to man here. That's, that's like basically two plays there. Keels up for three. That shot is way left. Never had a shot. Never had a chance. And Keel's on Perry now, which was kind of what I thought might happen, although they do switch it here. Perry gets zoned off there by Williams. Window Moore on O'Boyle. Williams on Quinn. Now it's Moore on Perry. Perry's going to take a way NBA three-point shot. That should be a foul. No! That's, yeah, 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 that's a foul. It's a foul on 45, man. He put Bancaro on the floor. Bancaro just get, not going to fall down. <laughs> Jeez, Roach getting outplayed by the golf. That's, uh, yeah. Look at this replay. There's no way Bancaro just falls down. Hmm. Carolina fans are going to say that's not right, but that's okay. They're Carolina fans. Nobody cares. <laughs> He gets his arm. He gets his arm. He gets his arm. Bancaro going to turn around. No good. Williams in there with the rebound. Misses. Gets his own rebound again. Williams going to try a third time. No. Gets hacked. Is that another foul on Rabio? Is that going to be... I have three. I might be wrong, though. Williams. 
Williams again. Williams, this time it works. Fourth time's a charm. And Mark Williams is the first Blue Devil into double figures. As he has 10 and Duke has 40. Yeah, I'm not, not sure if it was really like a happier extension as much as just like kind of bruise it on the way down. Either way, it didn't look really good. Rubio. Oh, that's blocked by Williams. Fantastic defense by Mark. And that should be a foul. They're not going to call it. Wendell coast to coast. Yes! And one. I'm not sure what the Lafayette defender was doing. Uh, trying to make sure Wendell didn't fall over as Wendell was celebrating. Oh, Williams with a rejection. Yeah, Wendell gets caught. <laughs> the uh, the Lafayette defender manages to catch Wendell. <laughs> and it is the old-fashioned three-point play as Wendell is now also in double figures. Now we're rolling. Now we're now we're rolling here. Oh, Boyle for three. Oh, actually, ooh, ouch. That goes. Maybe not. Maybe we're not rolling just yet. Still nine points. Yeah, I did just see that scroll across the uh, the ticker there. Sex is a torn ACL for the uh, the Cavaliers guard there. Wendell Moore for two. That's a nice mid-range jump shot. Perry. Ooh. Almost gives it up. Roach almost got a hand on it. Fulton. Gives it to Quinn. Quinn for O'Boyle? No. Jenkins. Jenkins working on Bancaro. Nine seconds on the shot clock. O'Boyle to Quinn. Quinn. Too strong. Good, good defense without fouling, actually. It was too strong from Lafayette. Roach finds Keels over by the Duke bench. Keels wide open. Wendell Moore from the top of the key. Yes! Give me that three. There we go. Oh, sorry. Meniscus there. That's right. Meniscus there. I, it's like scrolling down the bottom. I read it too quickly. Usually, I just assume knee, it said knee injury. I was like, mm, ACL. That's not as bad as an ACL. Whoo! Okay, flashes of brilliance here from our from our, our boys in 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 the white in the home whites. As Wendell is just starting to pour it on, he's got 16. Mark Williams has 10. <laughs> Lamelo Paul. Oh, is that for your Hornets? Was that what you were referring to earlier for the uh, for Charlotte? Actually, don't follow. My brother follows NBA. He's he's a Knicks fan. You'll have to forgive him. He's a Knicks fan. I don't uh, follow NBA as closely. Making sure that we've got all the accounting correct here. That yeah, that was four on Rubio. So I w I did have that one correct. And Duke foul situation. Duke foul situation. Keels, one. One, 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 one. Mark Williams only has one. No, Mark Williams is two. Joey Baker's got... Yeah, okay. I have this correct. All right, we're good. So no real foul trouble for our Blue Devils at all. Although Wendell Moore is currently the bright spot for Duke. We talked about him being the X factor he's delivering so far. He's got the best shooting percentage out of the team. He's at 60% of six of 10, uh, even though his three point shooting is one of five, but he had a big one. Also three for three from the free throw line. Nice. Just doing good stuff and six rebounds and currently four assists. He does have a triple double this season. Keeps this up. He's going to have at least a double double here. We'll see about the assists uh, here later. Ah, there you go. All right, and chat, make sure if you've just joined us, jump into the Discord. The watch party's going on with your fellow Blue Devil fans there. I have lost track. Is there? There's a bunch of people down there watching this one. Fantastic. Welcome in, and thanks, everybody, for joining us here on this Friday evening. 
It's the 19th of November. Hopefully everybody's gearing up for a nice Thanksgiving, a nice turkey day. I know I am traveling tonight to go visit the family. I've got to go all the way to Florida for that one. It's going to be a bit of a long flight, but it's a red eye, so I suppose I'll manage to sleep or I won't. And I'll just sleep all day tomorrow anyway, either way. But yes, we're, uh, I'm looking forward to a lot of turkey. Personally, I actually prefer the yams. are kind of usually the highlight of, uh, of our Thanksgiving. Yep. All right, and now we're back in action here. Duke's got a 14-point lead. We've seen Lafayette claw this thing back. Every time we extend the, out the lead, we just seem to, like, you know, just give it right back to them. Like, literally just give it right back to them. Uh, what we need right now is a uh, stop and score. So let's get some good defense here. Keels gets beat, actually. Fulton, good, good play design coming from the timeout by Lafayette, and they do manage to claw two back. Roach diving in, thinking about taking it himself. No, Bancaro thought about three, takes a step inside the three-point line, and Bancaro, that's an easy one for him. He's got nine. There's that short mid-range jump shot that I thought would be really effective. Like, that kind of thing is, like, really effective against his own, but hasn't quite been hitting. Oh, Boyle's three-point, no good. Keel's down with the rebound. And Roach up the floor with it for the Blue Devils as Wendell was looking back door, but didn't materialize. Wendell now working on Perry. Double team comes. Lafayette's still in the zone. And Keels, his three is in and out. Rebound by Van Caro here. And currently your Blue Devils on the, on the floor, rather. Moore, Roach, Van Caro, Keels, Theo John. So these are your five. As Lafayette still kind of playing a loose zone at the top. Yes. Uh, and Bancaro again from the same spot with the same result. There you go. Nicely done. Yeah, I can I'm sorry to hear that as well. I, I'm actually in Timothy's spot uh, <laughs> as well. You just can't get disappointed that way. But... Uh, We'll see. Ooh, great active hands by Theo John, who keeps pursuing, and he's got the turnover, and he's got the lay-in! Two more points for Duke. O'Boyle for three in front of the Lafayette bench. That doesn't go. Bancaro with the rebound and a foul. O'Boyle with a foul. There you go. Two fouls on him. And actually, oh, that's a that's an under... Not under 12 timeout. It should be the under... That's what? The under 16? Whew. No trauma safe money. There you go. Ah. Uh. <laughs> well, see? There you go. At the end of the day, you see, you're in a decent spot. It's her loss, man. That's how it goes. Her loss, you move on. Uh, 54. Looks like our positive vibes from the broadcast have made Duke... Uh, have amped up the level of energy for our Blue Devils here in the second half, which we kind of thought was going to go slightly this way. Oh, nice, Ken. You're, you're in PT school. That's actually really cool. So, fun story. One of the guys, actually, yeah, one of the guys I did I was uh, who was my co-head usher uh, while I was in B school at Duke was at Duke Physical Therapy, and he remains a very very good friend to this day. And so we we did uh, we did all of camp out together, organized all of camp out. We organized the whole season for the graduate students. Fantastic. Uh, so I uh, I can relate on that on that front, and I do unashamed like unashamed i ask him for uh 
every time my back hurts, I'm like, give me some, give me some PT advice. <laughs> so, uh, and it works, which is why I keep doing it. Luckily, I haven't had any serious, serious injuries, or I'd basically have to call him over here and be like, you're just going to be my PT for the next few months. Hang over here. Have the couch. But, uh, but yeah, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. I do want to, I want to check, uh. I want to just, I think, has our shooting improved? <laughs> has our shooting improved at all? Yes, it has. We're up to 40%. We're doing better. We're doing better. We're doing better. Doing better. Up to 40% from the abysmal 33. I suppose it is less failing than it was before. <coughs> but yeah, Wendell's Moore's numbers here, they're flashing them up on the screen. For those who uh, can't watch or aren't watching, 7.4 points per game freshman year, 9.7 sophomore season. And so far this year, 15 points per game. I actually think that 9.7 last year is kind of skewed because he had an abysmal start to the season. Oh, A.J. Griffin drills it for three, and now A.J.'s joining the party. Finishing my thought. He had an abysmal first half to last season, did Wendell. So I think that points per game is actually skewed. Because his second half of the season was really, really good. And it actually looks like a lot more of like the Wendell that we see now. Of course, the one we see now is even better. But like, I actually think his numbers from last year were skewed lower. Um, ooh, decent defense there by Theo John. Very good, very good. And uh, it's going to result in a foul for John. Although the first block was legit. Yeah. Yeah, my my uh, my buddy ended up specializing in uh, sports, uh, specifically for like sports medicine, which at Duke was a fantastic place to do it. Uh, like you can imagine, there's a whole like um, like he yeah he actually got to uh interact with some of the uh some of the athletes because they were doing research on all the sports related injuries and such um and i do think there yeah he used to tell us that there were some there were some basketball players sometimes that he'd see so uh rebound by theo john there as only one of two from lafayette and lafayette actually gonna get called for out of bounds although they want a replay on this as duke has now opened a 20 point lead um on the Cougars. Leopards? No, Leopards. They're Leopards. Yeah, Leopards. Leopards. Trevor Keels bringing the ball up the court. Screen by John. Keels almost gets caught in the air, but Joey Baker's in the right place at the right time. And he lays it in. Great cut by Joey. Theo, uh, Keels got a little lucky on that. Let's be real. That's John Brantley for two. New onto the scoreboard. Who does Mark Williams remind you of? Interesting question. Keels, 10, older Duke player. Mm. I don't know. T super. Uh. Let's put a bookmark in that question. As Bakers, we got a lot of action here. As AJ Griffin's going to put this three up. Oh, Theo John with a putback brings the house down. Yes. Lafayette needs a timeout, but they only have one left and there's 11 minutes to go. That's a, that's a Cameron. Oh, that's an, and that's an air ball. Oh, and that's the air ball. All right. This is Cameron at its best, at its finest right now. This fantastic putback dunk by Theo John is going to get the crazies rocking. And then your opponent airballs it. Like, what a fantastic sequence. What a fantastic sequence. Um, you know, so g go back to the, uh, the, the question there. Uh, who does he remind me of? Like, older players? I don't have as much Duke, like really, really old Duke history. 
Um, I'm trying to think, is he kind of like... Are there any comparisons to Okafor? Can we can we make such a comparison? Like, physical-wise, tall, lanky, maybe. Okafor's footwork was at a better place. Granted, Okafor only had one season, right? Um, and his footwork for a big for a freshman big man was just so good. Um, but like, who else would you even? Vernon Carey is too big. He's like a lot bigger, right? Carey was good too, but he's just bigger. I'm trying to think of like, you know, we, the the other problem is like for the longest time span of time there, we like didn't really have. We didn't really have a fantastic, just rock solid center. We had the Plumley brothers there for a while. I mean, it worked. It was fine. It was fine. Um, but yeah, thinking in in the recent like okay, so you brought up Zubac because of the rebounding. Yeah, and and Ja was more talented. So I actually think Mark Williams could just does more than Brian Zubek, to be honest. Um, he just <laughs> Zubek, even his final, like that senior season, um, it was crazy because he wasn't like, he wasn't like a really well, I feel like at least, cause we were on campus there, like I remember like 2018, I remember that, that well. And like, it, Zubek was a surprise to us. Like, he like came on so strong that season, especially the end of the season. And we're like, Whoa, um, it was, it was just a surprise. And like, I, I would think Mark's actually, is, I, I would think Mark's actually a little better. He seems more like he plays more within himself, more composed. <laughs> Zubik seems a little bit more lanky, kind of like everywhere, not as organized, uh, for a big man. Um, but, going way back i'd have to look chris i'd have to look that one up honestly i'd have to look that one up um oof rim protect i'm under like i mean shane battier is just like a a monster right rim protector that's kind of like what he was known for but mark williams has just had some erasers this season that are just like wow like he had the and there's two games. Like the first two games of the season, he goes in in two instances, right? Against Kentucky, he goes back to back blocks. He goes block block on back to back Kentucky possessions, and like we blow the game open. And you're like, whoa. And then he does it again, like the next night where he has like back to back blocks again. Oh, beautiful floater here by AJ Griffin. That's just a teardrop. Showing a bit more versatility to his game, actually. We've seen him score at the rim. We've seen him score from the three. We've seen him with his little, you know, mid-range floater. Nine points. This has got to be a uh, career-high four-game career. But anyway, you get the point. Uh, as Lafayette there with the putback. I think credit goes to 21. Uh... I don't even have, I didn't have a 21 on my score sheet. Lafayette is uh, really going going for it here. But the three-pointer, no, it's a two-pointer rather, Wendell. Nice. Super tall and long, but can't really move. Um, official Jenkins, Zion blocks or Mark Williams blocks? Okay, I don't know. The Zion ones are, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's the, was it the, well, no, the, the 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 Clemson one is the 360 dunk, but um, yeah, Zion blocks are. I mean, Zion. Here's the difference: Zion blocks end up in the first row of the stands, right? Like, Mark Williams blocks don't. <laughs> uh, Mark Williams blocks don't. So yes, Zion blocks uh take the cake on that one. Yeah, yeah, that was the that was the Virginia game, wasn't it, Keon? Um, <laughs> like that's the difference. Joey Baker, wide open three. 
One of, okay, one of these games throughout the season, Joey Baker is going to take a wide open three and he's going to miss. And I'm going to throw my headset across the room because I'm going to have had like I'm just like going to have had it at that point. Um, and it's going to be like in a really like tight game, and we're just going to be like we really need this one, and he's going to miss, and I'm just going to go off. It's not going to be tonight because we're going to win by a lot. But I'm just letting you all know to put me on notice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the game saving block against Virginia. Yeah, Virginia. Yeah. So okay, so there's your difference, right? Kind of to some, somebody's point is like must watch television. Yeah, because Christmas goes must watch television, and like that's why, right? Although I was talking with friends the other day, the other day, and they've been telling me now I don't watch the NBA as much as others, and this is a turnover here for Lafayette the Lance in the lap of Jeremy Roach as Mark Williams is gonna go coast to coast. Oh, we can't get it. Rebound for Williams himself, and now he's fighting for it. Up. With a big man, yes, in the reverse dunk. Beautiful stat sheet stuffer, by the way. Technically, two rebounds and one field goal in that possession as Williams blocks it again. See, that's what we mean. He can do it all the time, and that's a rebound. Mark Williams is stuffing this stat sheet at this point. Wendell Moore gonna go coast to coast. Wendell with a finger roll. 20 points. 20 points for Wendell tonight. Somehow I shorted Lafayette three two points. We'll get there. I want to see you, Rach. <laughs> oh, man. It'll come. It'll come. Uh, I can't think of the last game where <laughs> it was really bad. Maybe Gonzaga will be really bad. We'll see. Depends on what the situation is at the end of the Gonzaga game. Oh, God. Roach. Roach in. Roach Williams! Now we're just putting on an exhibition. This is a great assist by Roach. Oh, AJ Griffin tipped in the Lafayette too. Okay, that is uh technically is assigned to the Lafayette player who shot it. I'll go back and see who that is. So it's an own goal. Oh man, Williams. Yeah. Perry gets two. Williams wanted the block. Ain't happening, unfortunately. All right, I gotta see. I gotta see what. Oh, Mark Williams has 15 rebounds. <laughs> He's got more rebounds than points. That's insane. Roach with a little Euro step. Roach, the roll is too strong. Just falls off the rims ever so slightly. And more intercepts that. And uh, we're going to have a stoppage in play here. A lot of action in this last four-minute sequence. Beautiful alley-oop play as Williams has just got this thing rolling. Mark Williams with 14 points and 15 rebounds here tonight. Just incredible. Moore with his own 20 points. He's turned it on in this second half tremendously. And then we have, yeah, Paolo Bancaro at 11. Look at this. The freshman, this is not the Trevor, this is not the Trevor Keels Bancaro show. It's the Wendell Moore Mark Williams show here tonight, which is actually really cool. Um, and it's also, if you're watching this as a non-Duke fan, quite scary because it means that Duke can beat you in, uh, even if their star freshmen have an off night, we still can find a way to win, which is very reassuring for us, actually. Uh, Jenkins from the side of Lafayette hasn't scored, has scored one point. In the second half, after he's put up 14 in the first. All right, let's catch up with everything. EW Rampage. Let's catch up with everything here in chat. As we've got, as the uh, we've got folks come in and make sure if you want to watch the end of the game here, we've got what 6:47 to go. Jump into the Discord, everybody, and the thank once again, thank you everybody for. Or being out here, I know the regulars have been in chat. Timothy and Keon, you guys are fantastic. Lots of Blue Devil fans hanging out here tonight on this Friday night. Hopefully you're gearing up to have a good weekend, and this is just a great start of it, as Duke is opening up a 28-point lead so far tonight. Let's see, Fulton, oh, actually Fulton has seven, so my points are all over the place. Perry's got six, I have that right. Boyle's got five. 
Queen has four. Brantley's got two. Ah, D. There it is. Aha. Four. Bingo. And Sunderberg's got two. All right. It is 73.45. So there you go. All right. This is great. Make sure to... And if you're new, make sure to drop a subscribe. Of course, it's always free, but we have lots of fun here for the Duke games. Just about all the Duke games. I'll be back on Monday night, assuming my streaming setup works. I ship myself a computer to my parents' place uh, that should be able to stream. So uh, I'm looking, hopefully, that I get everything up and running. So we'll have that. And then we'll have Gonzaga the week after. Uh, and then we'll be on a slight break as I have a work trip. And then we'll pick it back up uh, after the Ohio State game. All right. How do you... They're flashing up a stat about 476 consecutive sellouts in Cameron. How is that actually a, still a streak? There was nobody in Cameron last season. Did they just, like, not just, like, take that out of the stats? As, like, an asterisk? Like, they're just like, yeah, we won't count last year. That doesn't work. I feel like all the streaks would have just ended, right? All right, last six minutes and 30 seconds here. Lafayette actually has only four seconds to get a shot off here. And actually, that's a pretty good shot. That little reverse there by Hines. He's got six. Been a little bright spot for Lafayette off the bench. <laughs> it's, a, it's a blip here. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Perfect. I love it. I love it. Just gone. Oh, Wendell! Keeps on pouring it in. 23 for him tonight. Cannot be stopped. He f he has found the stroke here in the second half. Just fantastic. And oh, Heinz and Roach going at it. Roach gets it thrown off his shins. And it's going to be out on Duke. So Lafayette will retain possession. Duke going to move to 5-0 and oh after the these final 5 minutes and 53 seconds here of the second half. I don't know Wendell going headed to the bench at the moment. I don't know if we'll see him back, if he's just getting a breather, if his night's done. Uh, catch and shoot action for Lafayette here as Jenkins gets it to go. That's his first uh, made bucket of the second half. Yeah. More what rhymes with cash, Flash. Ha! <laughs> I mean, I'd give Wendell a a standing over this one, a 23-point performance. He's probably going to come back. I think he's if he comes back, he gets a double-double. That's actually a foul on Jeremy Roach. Uh, that's a trip. Although, unintentionally, because Roach was on the floor when it happened anyway. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. How close is Moore to the double-double? Oh, uh, he's only got six rebounds. Maybe they don't put him back in. Who knows? In any case... 26-point margin here. Lafayette inbounding. And Lafayette's going to... Brantley's going to think about it, but he's being guarded by Baker, who actually... Ball's deflected off Baker's foot. And now there's bodies on the floor. Lafayette trying to get a timeout, but alternate... They're going to call a jump ball? They should. Alternating possession would give it to Duke, unless Lafayette actually gets this timeout in which case it's their final timeout. Five twelve to five fourteen to go here in the second. Yeah, and alternating possession does give it to Duke. So that was a jump ball. Bates Jones now in the game. For the Blue Devils, there number 34. For those of you watching along at home, and Griffin. Ooh, a little three-point shot. Yes, for Griffin. Beautiful. A little dribble action, faking the drive, and then stepping outside the three-point line to get. He got his separation from his man and just drilled it. This is a breakout game for A.J. Griffin, too, by the way. He's got more points than either Bancaro or Keels. Like, let's be real. And there's Perry for three. Oh, he finally hits that one. Okay. I, I, yeah, chat. Okay. 
<laughs> we see you now, man. That was that was something else. The shot looks the shot looks good. The stroke looks pretty good. And he's going to try again. Oh, the heat check. Oh, it goes in. Oh, oh yes. 15 points for AJ Griffin. Why not? Why not? Oh, that, that looks like a deadly shooting stroke. Wow. What? Jab step, jab step. Yo, that's an NBA shot. That's an NBA rhythm right there. Whoo. I like it. I like it. He's got 15. Bancaro and Keels sitting there on the bench being like, yo, go for it. <laughs> we'll just chill tonight. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes, yeah, I'm getting texted by fellow Duke fans. Back-to-back -back step back threes from Griffin. Unstoppable. Wow. Imp unstoppable, but just impressive. Impressive. All right. We have a legitimate... A legitimate scoring option here in AJ Griffin, who was well hyped coming into the season, but now he's playing like it. So, fantastic. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. This should be the final timeout here uh, of the game. It's a 3.59 on the clock. Duke 82, Lafayette 53. If he plays good, does he continue? Does he get to start and who does he replace? Interesting question here. I'm going to actually say he does not get to start, but he becomes the sixth man off the bench. He becomes the first option off the bench. Uh, would be what I would is how I do it uh, because who are we even bringing in off the bench as our six man right now it's like some combination of like Theo John and Joey Baker like depending on what the situation calls for like if AJ Griffin just continues to play well he's got an all around game and clearly he can he can hit inside he can hit outside like, I just see you just elevate him to being the first option off the bench and uh, and call it a day. There you go. And then that kind of puts Theo and, and Joey Baker into the more the role role playing like roles, which I think is kind of where they're like supposed to be anyway, right? Um, and so the pieces actually kind of fit together very nicely uh, if that if that happens. Yeah. Yeah, game against the Citadel on Monday. We'll be uh, hopefully we'll be right back here. But make sure you jump in Discord too. You get notified in case for some reason we're not. Uh, and you can also carry on the conversations about Duke and any other sports. There's plenty of wrestling conversation going on too, which is fine. Um, but Discord's the place to be to continue the conversation with your fellow Blue Devil fans, even when we're not uh, watching the games together here. Uh, Jalen Blake's into the game, and he's got himself a rebound as your five on the floor are currently Trevor Keels, Bates Jones, Jalen Blake's, Theo John, and A.J. Griffin. And Blake's stepped on the end line there, and it will be a turnover by Duke. Oh, move Jeremy. I, I do, I'm not so sure about moving Jeremy. I, I do think that Kay, like... The advantage, at least, it's an option because you have ball handlers and keels and more, right? So, but it is sort of, it would be sort of curious that you'd be like, who actually is the Duke point guard? Is it like, it's supposed to be Roach, but it's actually this like combination of more Roach and keels, right? But the one who, yeah, so it's, it's kind of odd. 
Um, I don't know what the lineup would look like. It'd be a huge lineup. Could you imagine? Without, like, Roach, it'd just be enormous. And another... Oh! AJ again! For three. What? AJ Griffin, welcome to Cameron. Welcome to Duke, man. That's it. This is the this is the party. This is the homecoming party here for AJ Griffin. He's had himself a night, man. This is great. This is great. You know, back in the day when you used to play beer pong, we'd say three for three. That's fire. <laughs> you take you take the next one. Whoo! <laughs> he's just got he's just seeing a big bucket right now that rim is that rim's huge <laughs> you can't miss just keep taking it man just take another one i just want to see another one i want to see another one because i think it'll go from the same spot by the way he said all three of them right in front of coach k oh do it again do it oh no okay we can dream. Theo John even's going to go for three. That's a little ambitious as it hits the back of the iron. And the rebound down to Lafayette. The line, by the way, was 32 and a half. We're sitting on a 32 point lead at the moment for Duke. So Vegas has, uh, has uh, AJ Griffin to thank here. Three point shot and missed. Uh, and the r next one is going to be taken by Lafayette, but that's no good either. As we have 145 left to go here in the game. Wow, AJ Griffin comparison to Andre Dawkins? Really? Oh, he almost took it again! Oh, he should have done it. Oh, you just should have shot it. I don't care if it goes or not. Just shoot it. It's great theater at this point. <laughs> oh, it's just fun to watch. He's way bigger than Dre, though. I feel like, also, I feel like towards the end of his career, Dre was much more of like. He was known for just for being like just this three point shooter, but Griffin's shown us a lot more than that. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if I would. I don't know if that comparison is is, is fair. Um, I mean, he's got the body type of Justice Winslow, right? Like this, he's got like this big body, like a like a Justice Winslow. All right. Well, we've the walk ons are on. So if you want to see Cameron really go nuts, this is it. Griffin's out. He's not going to get a chance to go four for four. <sighs> Bates Jones for three. That shot is good. Bates Jones not going to miss. It was a beautiful. I, Bates Jones is just like this pure shooter, man got a great great shooting stroke as uh both teams seem to have uh, cleared the benches which is going to make my uh gonna make it look odd here one of the walk-ins here borden bringing down the rebound so he's into the stat sheet and that's a turnover And this is just, it's about 30 seconds left. Lafayette's got a 15-second shot clock here. Borden guarding. Bates-Jones at the top. Lafayette will recover the rebound. And I, this is going to be the final shot here. It's going to be, it's right now a 33-point margin, which technically would cover the spread. It's kind of crazy how that happens. Except, nope, three-point shot by... Uh, by Lafayette is no good. Duke is going to bring this one over the timeline, and that is going to be it. Wow. No, I uh, no Jenkins. I don't think Andre was bad at all. He's he's a great player. I just think that the AJ Griffin's got a bit more physicality. That's the only difference. That was it. That was like that was like the extent of my uh, of. I just think it's a physicality thing. So that was the difference. That was the only difference. Yeah. Um. But wow. Okay. Fantastic. Wendell Moore with 23 points tonight. I would almost be inclined to give AJ Griffin player of the game, though, uh, because he put on a show for us here. 18 points for Griffin. Okay, so Wendell Moore is like player of the game for me tonight. 
He's got the most points. He's got rebounds. But actually, Mark Williams makes a decent run at it, too, with 14 points and 15 rebounds. A fantastic double-double performance from Mark Williams, who was just all over the place. He's, be- like, granted, he's not, like, the other team isn't as tall, but he's beating them, right? Like, yeah, so there's no there's no height. He's got a height advantage, but use it and actually make it make them pay for it. That's the thing that Mark Williams is actually making other teams pay for not having height. But yeah, Wendell, fantastic here. 23 points. And A.J. Griffin, I think A.J. Griffin is the storyline of the night because he just put on a fantastic performance, which we haven't seen yet this season. Um, Bates Jones is 100% from three. Is he actually? That's insane. I'm not surprised. Mark Williams, runner up. All right, all right, all right. Chat has voted. Chat has voted. It's Williams. It's, uh, it's, oh, actually, no, we have a split vote. We're really between Williams and Wendell. I'll have to, like, I know on Twitch you can do polls. I don't know if you can do that on YouTube. At some point, we might be able to do that, uh, if we get more subs or something. Uh, but that would be a fun thing to do at the end of the, at the end of games. But yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, storyline, I think, is A.J. Griffin's performance. Because, look, Trevor Keels put only up 10, and Bancaro only put 11, and Duke won by 33. So we were able to find other ways to score, which is super positive. This team just continues to show us new things every game. Um, Yeah, exactly. So bingo, bingo. Chat's got it right. Uh, With official Jenkins, the bright spot, and the big note, yeah, Duke can win without... Bancaro and Keels, which is my biggest takeaway from tonight, is that, you know, Bancaro and Keels have an off game. So what? Doesn't matter. Like, you got other guys that can step up, and that's fantastic. Um, because at some point in the season, that's going to happen. Uh, and you're going to need a fourth and a fifth option. Or you're just going to go in the, or this is going to be a game where we go out on the road and just get killed. Because, like, one of our guys didn't show up. But if you have other ones, we can always keep it close and interesting. So, anyway, um, look, I really appreciate everybody hanging out tonight. we got a bunch of regulars. we got some new folks, too, that I haven't seen uh, names. So, uh, thank you, everybody, for hanging out and for showing up. Make sure to hit that sub button so you get notified when we go live and you can come back. Because we do plan on being here for most of the Duke games throughout the season. At least the ones that uh, are sort of realistic, given my schedule. Sometimes it's just not going to happen. But... Uh, we will have watch parties that go on in Discord. And you can always join your fellow Duke Blue Devil fans in Discord. And we can keep talking Duke all week long until the, between games. Um, and that's just a lot of fun to do. So uh, we're going to sign off for tonight because I have to go catch a flight. So I will go do that. And then I will see you all back here on Monday uh, for the game against the Citadel. And then we'll have a fantastic turkey day with everybody. So thank you very much once again. I'm going to sign off for tonight, but I'll see you all back here on Monday night. It's a 9 o'clock game, Eastern time, 6 o'clock on the, on the West Coast. And, uh, yeah. Otherwise, go Duke!